happening, y'all? It's real to death, and we are inside of the room. So this is my first time staying in New York. New York, I've been in uh, Vegas before, you know, a couple times here and there. But beautiful room they got. Definitely a real nice situation they got cooked up. Definitely can't say I'm mad at this. Let's check out the view. Seventh floor. Yeah, that's a nice area. Oh, so that's the view. Not bad. So I am freshly checked in. I am exhausted from the early flight, but it is time for me to get situated. And then we're gonna be checking out and seeing what's going on over there at CES. My first CES convention, <laughs> I don't know what to expect, but hey, I'm gonna go ahead and find some cool things to, uh, for us to go ahead and look at. So stay tuned for some of the things to, to come. This is actually my first time at the Venetian, y'all. Vegas is full of so many different hotels and resorts. But it's the same, man. This Venetian, it's definitely got a presence to it. <laughs> yeah, those are to some hype for sure. since I might be the only one with the shades on the side. I've seen a couple people like that in the casino, but we're far from inside the casino now. It's looking a lot different out here. Honestly, everything was pretty interesting, so I think I'm gonna just go walk up to some booths and figure out what I wanna see. So this ended up being the first thing to catch my eye. It's a product from Nanoflow. Oh, So I then saw these, and I wasn't sure what quite to make out of them initially, but I'm pretty sure they're just like Bluetooth vinyl players. Now this I instantly thought was a real deal. So I'm sure a couple of you can already tell by just giving a look at this thing that, yeah, this is indeed a smart brew and tap device that you can use as a home brewing appliance uh, by this company called iGulu. As you can see, I'm looking at this brochure here, a couple of uh, overview information about the product. And I got captivated by this ad that's playing. And as you can see, he's on his way to the picnic, the cookout, whatever you want to call it. And you can pull up to your friends and show off your own home brewed beer. And I'm sure the applications and functions and specialities of this uh, got to be really interesting. In keeping with the theme of tech and drinks going hand in hand, ran across this little contraption right here. As you can see, she's giving us all a demo uh, and showing us what this little thing can do. So, poured up a tequila sunrise that she's gonna show us and uh, tell us more about here in a few seconds. But um, it was really good. This company called Barsi's, um bringing the bar home. Essentially, this would be kind of like, I guess the next evolution of one of those mixer shakers. So now imagine just really taking the guesswork out of uh, making a bunch of estimates and measures and letting the appliance do all the fancy work for you. Coming up with the perfect mixture and craft each and every time. If you want to get hands off, of course. I tried it and it was really good. So it was at this point where I realized I was in the food tech section area of this part of the CES convention. This place is absolutely huge and my first time here I really didn't know 
just the scale of it. But as you can see here, I'm looking at this stir fry robotic machine. So I'm imagining, obviously, this is not probably for most commercial use. This is probably for like, um, probably one of them calf, cafeteria type uh, situations. Probably something you might remember from college or maybe at a company or somewhere special. But as you can see, they won this award for the innovation here. Um, pretty fascinating to actually have a machine or a robot craft something as ingredient specific as a stir fry. So, I mean, just imagine being able to get those different little recipes that they kind of have on the screen there and being able to customize it the way you want. Um, I didn't actually get to see a demo. This The food that came out here was uh, from a demo from before. But yeah, you can see there's a lot of stuff in this contraption. They had a lot of different little tubes and various sauces within them. Oh. <laughs> I'm trying to document everything too. <laughs> Is it something that you can see in like your office or like your employee park? So as you can hear, there's a couple of different little thoughts being shared about this contraption here. This company's called Always Chill and they have this incredibly efficient cold snap ice cream uh, machine maker. It makes a couple of different things beside ice cream and as you can see right here on this little board here, there's a couple of different pros and treats. But it specializes in making a bunch of different frozen treats and and the rep was kind enough to get into exactly like what makes this machine special apparently it's extremely clean and hands off and something that you don't really have to clean very much or much at all because nothing internally gets touched i feel like there's some powerful benefits that you can see right away for the germaphobes you don't have to worry about where your ice cream has been and what's been touched throughout the machine or anything along the process and as far as cleanliness and maintenance Without it touching the things that inside the machine, there wouldn't be a need to really clean and maintain it. So, no, the ice cream machine is down situation like McDonald's you might see. <laughs> Just pop in one of the canisters that's made for it right there at the top. Oh, I, oh, I got it. Just in time. Oh, I'm so sorry I distracted you. <laughs> no, this sitting on a gold mine. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's a fascinating machine. Four in line. Yeah. Um, Okay. It's, it's, it's just oh, yeah. just like you oh, said, you it's caught it. <laughs> this is actually crazy, y'all. This is really good. <laughs> that machine is like ultra pure, ultra clean ice cream. But I guess we already got ice cream machines, but. Yeah, that's good. Smart grills, making it a thing, clearly. As you can see, got the little display here. All of our appliances are just getting smarter and smarter. So, nothing crazy here to expect uh, in 2024, right? But as you can see, it's not an operation grill. I mean, that might be kind of crazy and dangerous. Some food to taste off of this would be good, though. Yeah, as you see, pretty obvious use cases. Just some visual feedback and display functionality and a touch screen for just the temperature and such. So I ran into a flash freezer, and this is really interesting because it's, yeah, essentially the reverse of a microwave. You literally would put something in here and freeze it really quickly. I was told that you could freeze a bag of peas in as little as four minutes. So this is marketed mostly towards like grocery stores and such. Yeah, as you can see here, this is our future of robotic um, lawnmowers. This is the next obvious step from the Roombas and whatnot. So, as you can see, you got these little rovers roaming around and handling that grass with ease. So, yeah, I mean, obviously, with the oh, way the robot noise. vacuums have been evolving, it only makes sense to apply that same concept up there to the yard, right? So then I stumbled across this rain cycle, mega rain cycle, clearly. And it looks like we just have an insanely smart and very advanced food trash compactor. So they even got the scaled down home version. Smart trash cans. Get them in mega or non-mega, what they need it for commercial or home use. <laughs> it's probably good for the environment. So in the trend of making smart everything, we have smart air fryers, pressure cookers, and food processors. Now, I think these are obvious uh, use cases here. 
Now, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with uh, this concept, but I have heard about this uh, for quite some time, and uh, looks like the research and development has been going well. But yeah, this is literally wireless charging, um, not through the way of a pad, but literally through the air. So charging over wireless wavelengths, which yeah, it's <laughs> we're getting that advanced. Just don't expect too many voltages to fly through the air and charge your phone like your cable. I mean, do you really want to test that out and <laughs> see how that works? Now obviously, I'm not the one who knows how this all works from the inside out, so who's to say or even know if that's even possible? But I think it is safe to say that we will be seeing long-range wireless charging in our future of some sort. Really, it's getting better and better. I do a lot of good things. Really here, they're talking about safe batteries. Certainly good for our carbon footprint. And then I had a detour over here to the Motorola section. Got to take a look at some devices. As you can see right here, we got the new and improved Razer. The Razer they brought back. You know, I'm actually a fan of the flip phone, so of course they got the uh, Motorola Razers on display. So they won an award here for the patients. But yeah, as far as this glasses, I didn't get to actually touch this little headset here on display, but I wish I did. There was a couple people in line for me, and I didn't really want to wait until it was taking quite a bit of time. But some kind of cool augmented reality tools, that's what it looks like. So, but yeah, curious to see what that is all about from Motorola, but yeah, this was just a quick detour. Motorola is part of their Razer and some other things to show off. So I found myself over here in Bath. Open. Clearly, if this is your shower, yo, hit me up because we need to be friends and uh, we need to get this networking in. I need a sponsor. <laughs> but yeah, in all seriousness, I don't know if this is supposed to represent some kind of crazy shower concept, but gotta say, it's impressive. You had this, it's definitely stunned on it. But um, yeah. Took you a bunch of little pieces of it. That's pretty cool. Over here blew my mind a little bit because we get to see some incredibly out of the world wow. toilets here. <laughs> As you can see, my hear my reaction. Here next, some of these cost upwards of ten thousand dollars. That one's built for a party dog. Got music. It's got a whole knob for music and everything, and speakers and such. So you gotta have some serious cash just to have this feel to it. So literally, you're sitting on money. And over here, I wasn't really sure whether this was supposed to be some kind of fancy tub or a sink of some sort. I mean, it looks like it's fit for your pets to fit in or babies. So I made my way over into different areas of technology here. Stumbled upon this entertainment chair, which seems to be a feature of some sort of entertainment. And definitely a very advanced chair, I'd say so. Uh, so, so myself. You're surrounded by speakers and surrounded by comfort. Yo, this looks really cool. What's what's going on here? So this has hand tracking and finger tracking. Those are inputs. Really cool sunglasses, by the way. Um, and then it has uh, for outputs to the user. It has LRA motors inside to give high fidelity and haptic feedback. It has RGB LEDs inside to give visual feedback as well. Isn't it isn't it cool where things are going with this space, man? Dude, it's insanely <laughs> cool. It's like all the stuff you've seen back then is what the future is. It's coming out right now. Right. It's like now is the time, the future is here. Exactly. <laughs>
No, man, that's cool. How... We all started around the same time. Um, Ola, he's the CEO. He, he brought the team together about a year and six months ago. And ever since then, we've been working on it. And I believe we unveiled like four nights ago on Sunday during CES Unveil. That's when we uh, unleashed this to the public. And we're actually running a pre-order right now. We're trying to get it out in June. A set, so a left and right will be $400. But if you do the fifty dollars plus deposit right now, it will be three hundred fifty instead. That's not even bad, to be honest. That's for what it like this. Uh, I thought we were expensive at four hundred. A lot of people have been talking to me. They're like, that's cheap. So yeah, as he eloquently put and was explaining, the purpose of this device is to be in a sort of an all-in-one input device that you can use with your hands throughout computers, tablets virtual reality headsets and all of that all in one and be able to get visual feedback with the lights on the hands and I got to see a little bit of it from the video but it's pretty incredible I can't really get my head around like really using that fully as an input device but I'm sure once you get the hang of it it's got to be pretty incredible feeling so yeah that's that's far out of here to, uh, any android watch and it turns your watch into basically a bluetooth mouse and with this mouse you can connect to anything that has bluetooth and control it uh just by like tapping at it pointing at it tapping at it now this here was something sweet i wasn't expecting to see something like this it's very much similar in concept to uh, the other glove idea but this is to do with smart watches and something that a lot of people already have on their hands or their wrists but there's this company called Double Point, and they have an application under the same name in the App Store. You can download it to your watch. I think right now it was only available on the Android watch, which I was able to test out on my Samsung watch. And it actually works really well, whether you're using it for a computer, virtual reality headset, or anything that has cursor input capabilities, you can use it. And then you can move your wrist around. It tracks some of the geometry within your wrist and you actually pinching your fingers together registers as a click and it's one of the most incredible things so i highly recommend it uh it's worth a try um if you have a device that you can use this with um sure they'll be coming to ios uh apple watches and such at some point but really cool proof of concept from what they showed and they showed how they could turn on and off that light that you see in the background uh using this kind of gesture really cool innovation for the watch using modern technology to make it really feel that much future forward funny enough this input method also works on the samsung z series devices the z fold and z flip because they have cursor input capabilities as well once you fold them in, in half or halfway fold them so that you can turn it into somewhat of a mini desktop or computer laptop kind of vibe when I tried it out for the first time, yeah, it just increased my shock factor with <laughs> how something like this works. So kudos to Double Point for figuring out how to make this work. You want to see a virtual office? Yeah. Come on in. I'll be happy to. <laughs> uh, what you see here on the big screen is our actual office. We're a fully remote company. Uh, we've been from Alaska to the Netherlands, That's 10 right. hours of time zones. We don't have a physical office. This is browser based, nothing to download or install. And you can load in, do you play games at all or video games? Oh, yeah. Alright, your game basically captures you, you're in the game now. So it's your standard controls, you have WASD up, down, left, right. You can, you can move around, fly around, and have conversations with people. So listen, here's Alex. I'm going to pop in. Alex can't hear me, but he can see me, he can see me jumping up and down, right? That's incredible. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pop in, and now it says two participants, Alex G. That is who, there's two people at an audio conference now. So, Alex, you want to uh, go ahead and share a screen with me? Thanks, sir. And if Alex and I want to have a private conversation, I click that button, close the door, and now no one can barge in on us or hear what we're saying. I can open the door, and now it kind of signals, oh, okay, Eric and Alex. And so Wes can see Alex and I having a conversation. He just shared a screen, I can pull that up. So that's a browser tab he's got open. You can resize that, you can pop it over to another, like a secondary monitor if you want to. Alex, when I leave, will you lock me out? Thanks, sir. So he doesn't want to be bothered now. So now I can get in. Right? That is really cool. And I jump around and, hey, there's Wes. Wes is in California. There's Party and Search. He's a, one of our DevOps engineers. She's one of our senior software engineers. They're having a conversation. They can see me, like, awkwardly looking outside the window. <laughs> but, like, you know, they're used to me doing that. So 
And then at our general kind of work day, like, I'd pop in and I'm just here. Maybe I'll put myself on mute, and now I'm in my home office, and I'm on Slack, checking my email. But we all have access to each other as a fully remote company. That's the, the power of crypto. That is awesome. Yeah. And it's, like, very fluid. I, li- I like the naturalness about it. Thank you. Yeah. It, it, was, it was three years of hard work. Now, this is just instantly eye-catching. You can't tell me that this wouldn't catch your eye for high-level skincare. <laughs> Clearly, some advanced things is going on behind that mask. So. so, I came in really quick here to the CES convention out here in Las Vegas. And I only got one day out of it, but still, I actually got to see so much in one day. It's honestly impressive and really cool to be here. You know, it's just really impressive to see the type of ingenuity and the kind of devices and inventions that people come up with. Um, the companies that I've seen today, the products that they've shown, all the ingenuity has have been on a pretty high mark and things have been out of way out of <laughs> the realm of expectation, if I'm being honest. And honestly, I gotta say, it's just been an awesome opportunity to be here at CES and be able to kind of see what, what these things look like in person and honestly just take a look at some technology that I wasn't even really had on the radar of what things were being worked on and what's going to come out to uh, integrate integrate with what <laughs> you know it's a really great place to see a lot of people who are excited about technology and uh, about the new things that are happening now uh, it just yeah a fostering <laughs> fostering a well or it's like a melting pot of all sorts of you know technical innovation so seeing people who are hungry people who are really out here just trying to really come up with the next thing and it's it's such an environment to be uh, immersed in an environment where everyone has that uh, shared level of passion you know I think <laughs> I would definitely love to be here another year um, and actually get a lot more time to be able to take a look at different products and different booths and i am only been at the Venetian. I spent a lot of time getting lost on my way here so <laughs> it's big out here y'all. Um, but I have to say um, even with that it's been a really good um, turnout being able to see the things that I have seen even with just one day so I can only imagine what back to back looks like when you have a couple days in a row to check out some things. But impressed there's a lot of good companies and i'll be putting that together in a a montage video to share off some highlights and uh, talk about some of the cool companies and products out there that you guys might might want to have on your radar some of these might actually turn into a lot more big bigger consumer products so really curious to see what happens with that but yeah that has been a ces breakdown over here with your guy around the dev thank you for being here with me and yeah, hopefully you saw some things that are cool out of uh, today. And can't wait to share some more of my thoughts with you guys. But until then, you guys, stay easy.